My name is Michael Workman, and I've been working on the electrolytes deposition of silver onto sulfate-terminated polystyrene spheres. As an adjunct of the sewer program this summer, I have been working in the lab of Professor Michael Solomon in the Department of Chemical Engineering here at the university. Now this summer I've been working in the area of nanoparticles, a subsection of the um, chemical engineering. Specifically, I've been dealing with anisotropic particles, um, specifically in their synthesis and characterization. Now, there, there are two different types of anisotropic particles that I've dealt with, the first being anisotropic due to its shape. Uh, I have been involved in the synthesis of polymethyl methacrylate rods, or PMMA rods, and you can see that in the picture on the right. Now, these particles are anisotropic, um, meaning that they are directionally dependent with regard to their shape, um, meaning that their, their length is different from their breadth. I've also dealt with the anisotropic particles due to surface coating, and I'll expand on that today with the ELD of silver onto sulfate-terminated polystyrene spheres. And I've also been characterizing these, these particles. And the two main ways to characterize them are with regards to their size, and I've done this by measuring dimensional parameters with using the scanning electron microscope. And I've also been analyzing charge. Now, I've been doing this using a zeta sizer machine, um, obtaining a um, obtaining the electrophotaric mobility and using this to back calculate the zeta potential of the colloidal system. Now you might be asking, why use this ELD process? Now there are a few advantages for the ELD procedure. The first of all, notably, you can control the amount of silver that you deposit on these spheres using a redux reaction. This allows for a high degree of selectivity and um, it requires only, only mild processing conditions. Now, the most important advantage of this is its low, cost, um, its low cost status. Now, this has implications for bulk production in industry and scale up. There are, however, a few disadvantages. It is difficult to obtain uniformity and stability throughout the system. And there is a small tendency, as you will see in, in future pictures, uh, for um, the particles to agglomerate, which means that they kind of bunch together. And they're not useful for our uh, for our purposes in assembly. Now the picture that you see on the right are these uh, polystyrene spheres um, without, this, without the silver coating. Now the reaction procedure was fairly straightforward. The ratios that we used were obtained using the Quai Kretschmer paper that I've um, referenced in my reference section. Now in a clean amber jar we combined 0.1 grams of, these, of the po polystyrene spheres with one milliliter of 0.003 molar silver acetate which was subsequently stirred for 12 to 18 hours under darkness. We then added 30 microliters of ammonium hydroxide and then stirred again for an hour. We then added the reducing agent formaldehyde, 60 microliters worth. And at this step, a reaction can be observed. The solvent does change from white to black. After a further stirring for an hour, the particles have been centrifuged um, five to eight times for 15 minutes with distilled water added each time. And we then took these um, final products, sputter coated them, and imaged them on the SEM. Now the two independent variables that I studied were the amount of silver acetate added and the amount of ammonium hydroxide added. So we're going to start with manipulation of the silver acetate. If you can remember, the, the calculated from the paper, the, from the Kretschmar paper, the calculated amount was one milliliter. So we decided to repeat the reaction from one milliliter to eight milliliters of silver acetate added while keeping all the other parameters constant. And keeping in mind that the goal for our purposes were to achieve a sphere um, between 70 and 100 percent covered with these silver particles. And as you can see from the pictures below, the, the most optimal amount of coverage that we got was from the five milliliters of silver acetate added. Anything less than that, as you can see from the 2.5 milliliters, did not um, resulted in the fact that there wasn't enough silver present, so we did not get enough deposited on the spheres. As you can see from the 7 milliliters, anything over 5 resulted in an agglomeration of silver not, uh, not on the spheres. Um, and this was, this was due to um, silver undergoing an autocatalytic reaction, a uh, redox reaction with the reducing agent formaldehyde. And this creates nucleation sites off of the spheres themselves and there is insufficient amount of silver in remaining to be deposited on the spheres themselves. So again, five milliliters was the optimal amount of silver acetate. 
we then decided using this to manipulate the amount of ammonium hydroxide and, and see its effects. The calculated value was 30 microliters, so we varied a little bit up and a little bit down from this. And in, con we, we, in conclusion, we saw that small, small variability in this um, didn't have much effect. But as you started reducing the amount of ammonium hydroxide to 20 to 15 microliters, the reaction didn't really take place. And this was probably because there, um, there wasn't enough uh, ammonium hydroxide to react with the extraneous negative ions, which prevented the reaction from proceeding. So again, the initial conclusions from this were that 5 milliliters of silver acetate was the optimal amount, um, provided the optimal amount of sphere, um, sphere coverage, um, and the amount of uh, ammonium hydroxide appeared to be less important. However, we did observe much agglomeration, as you can see, as you could observe in the pictures. Um, so future work is needed in order to prevent this so that we can achieve a um, so we can achieve u useful spheres for, um, for our assembly purposes. And also, uh, further work is needed in order to determine the optimal amount of formaldehyde added so that we can obtain the optimal amount of all um, reaction parameters. Thank you very much.